Okay, when you take a look at this problem, we're trying to evaluate, find the exact value of sine. And then on the inside of our sine function, we have cosine inverse of one half plus sine inverse of three fifths. So this looks intimidating when you first get going on it. Um, no joke about that. But what I do notice is we have two things that are added together inside of the sine function. So I went ahead and I brought up our sum identity for sine. So sine, when we have two things added together on the inside, um, is equal to what's on the right-hand side. So as we get going on this, I'm going to go ahead and try to label things as we go. That I want to visualize this as sine inverse of one half is going to be our alpha, just kind of referring to that formula down below. And then sine inverse of three-fifths is going to be our beta. So I'm going to formalize this a little bit more and say, well, alpha is going to be cosine inverse of one half. And beta is going to equal sine inverse of three fifths. So now we've defined those um, and said that alpha is equal to this cosine inverse of one half. What that also allows us to do is allows us to rewrite this equation in terms of cosine as opposed to cosine inverse. What I mean by that is if we apply a cosine to both sides, we get cosine of alpha is equal to the cosine of cosine inverse is gonna get some nice canceling out in this situation. And we're only gonna be left with one half over on the right hand side. Okay, and then over here, we can do something very similar with our beta and sine inverse. We can say, well, if we apply a sine to both sides, we get sine of beta is gonna equal three fifths. And that's kind of important to rewrite these both in terms of cosine and of sine as opposed to the inverse functions. I find this handy anyway for me. All right, so looking at our formula and what we wanna fill into, you may say, well, I know cosine of alpha equals one half. We could replace this cosine of alpha down in our formula with a one half and you would be correct. And you may say, well, we now know sine of beta is equal to three over five. So sine of beta in our formula down here, we can replace with three over five. So that's nice, except we don't know what sine of alpha is. And we don't know what cosine of beta is to fill in these other components for our formula. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of side work here and come up with sine of alpha and cosine of beta. But the good news is we have done this type of work before. So let's just focus over here where we have cosine of alpha equals one half. Ignore everything else for the time being. All right, so if we know cosine of alpha equals one half, we could pretty easily draw a tr right triangle to go along with this situation. It may not be to scale, but that's okay. So if I put alpha in that corner, I know from SOHCAHTOA that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And I also know that if I'm trying to find sine of alpha, sine of alpha is gonna be defined to be opposite over hypotenuse. So Katoa again, right? So based on just this triangle we're focused in on, I need to find this opposite side length to help me get sine of alpha. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm gonna call it A for the time being. And we can use the Pythagorean, uh, Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean formula to help us out. So we can say, well, that's gonna be A squared plus one squared equals two squared. So a squared plus one equals four. A squared is gonna equal three as we subtract that one, move it to the other side, make this into a power equation. Finally, we're gonna apply a square root to both sides to get a on one side all by itself. And we're gonna get a is the square root of three. So over here on this opposite side, we can say this is the square root of three over on this side. And it shouldn't be too bad to set up the cosine of alpha can be defined to be opposite square root of three over the hypotenuse. So we can fill in the sine of alpha. All right, we still need the last component here for this formula is cosine of beta. So we're gonna use what we have going on on the right hand side to help us get that. So again, back to drawing triangles. All right, maybe I'm the only one that likes drawing the triangle and using the Pythagorean theorem, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put beta down here in the bottom right. 
And I know that sine is defined to be opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to go ahead and say three goes on the opposite side, five goes on the hypotenuse. Again, maybe we just don't know this side length. So Pythagorean theorem to help us out, we can say three squared plus b squared, as I labeled it b, is equal to five squared. So nine plus b squared equals 25. Move that nine to the other side by subtracting it. So we'll get b squared equals 16. To finish this up, we'll apply a square root to both sides and we'll get b is gonna equal four. So um, we need to fill in cosine of beta. So cosine of beta, again, referring to this triangle that involves beta, that is gonna be the adjacent four over the hypotenuse. So we're gonna replace this with four over five. All right, the last things that we may wanna do on this is just clean up our answer. Like we filled in all of the components, which is very nice, but we can do a little bit better as far as the final answer goes. So one way to clean this up and make it look nicer is we have two fractions multiplied together. Let's multiply their numerators and multiply their denominators. And then we have two more fractions over here being multiplied together. So again, multiply numerators, multiply denominators. The very last thing I may go ahead and do is we have two separate fractions being added. Let's combine these into a single fraction, keep that common denominator, and just put these numerators together over that common denominator. And that's gonna be the best answer we get to on this one. All right, so kind of challenging problem. Uh, take your time, draw your individual triangles. I find this to be the most helpful is draw individual triangles after you label everything as alpha and beta, get rid of the inverses and uh, use that Pythagorean theorem. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck.